guys, welcome to the vlog. Swift is going to crash. Now, the Swift programming language is a very, very good language. In case you don't know, the Swift programming language was designed by Apple specifically for iOS development, but they open sourced it, meaning they let every nerd in the world work on Swift. IBM looked at it and said, hey, this is a cool language. They ported it to the server so you could run Swift on the server to create super fast web apps. It's still in its infancy, so I wouldn't jump on that. But here's the thing. Swift is largely used today for iOS development, developing native apps for iPhone, iPad, and also Mac OS, but that's, that's really niche. But most people these days don't write native apps anymore. Most of the big companies, from what I'm hearing, it's really all about hybrid apps, whether it be React Native, or PhoneGap, uh, there's other frameworks out there as well. And the reason being is that people don't want to write an app in iOS, in Swift, and then have to write the whole thing over again in Android, having to maintain two code bases, it's just a disaster. So I know from people who work for very large organizations, they have told me that they have stopped writing native code a couple years ago, they go uh, Cordova, they go PhoneGap. These are all frameworks that allow you to use web technologies, HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript, and to uh, build your apps that way. Now, with these frameworks, they can access things like the gyroscope and uh, all this native stuff can be accessed directly using the web stack. So that's why React Native and PhoneGap, they're replacing the need of writing native code. Now, on occasion, you need write, to write native code for high performance games or something like that, but that, those are a small niche part of the market. But to address that, to address that, Google has come out with a framework called Flutter, which is C, C++ based, and it uses a language called Dart, which is very much like JavaScript, that allows you to build apps with this framework. And it's still in beta, but apparently it's pretty cool. In fact, it's so cool that Google's main money earner, their AdSense, not AdSense, their AdWords program, the app is based on this Flutter framework. And so you write your, fr your Flutter app and it compiles down to native code in both platforms. Again, you have now native speed or nearly native speed, but one code base. It's terrible to have to maintain two different code bases one for iOS, one for Android. Ugh, you don't want to do that. Companies are not doing that, in fact. So what does that mean in the end? That means that the main use case for Swift, that is writing fast native iOS apps, could be killed by Flutter. And if it lives up to expectations, I can tell you it will be killed by Flutter. Between the hybrid apps, which is going to be used to create 95% of apps, for both iOS and for Android. And then you have Flutter, which will give you that high performance that you need for that other 5% of apps that need that high performance. People are gonna be going to Flutter because I'm a business owner and I hire coders. I've been hiring coders for 20 years now. Yeah, 17 years. Anyway, I tell you, this is what I would look at. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't have to hire Swift experts and I don't have to hire Android, uh, Java experts for Android. I can just do it in Flutter. I'm in. Same thing with hybrid, right? Hybrid apps are probably at this point, I don't have the, the exact statistics, but I would imagine they're dominating the uh, mobile app development space. So what happens to Swift? Where, where does this Swift language go? It's going to become super marginalized because there's going to be no reason to write Swift because iOS will be done with PhoneGap, uh, React Native, and some other frameworks, hybrid frameworks, web-based frameworks for mobile or this Flutter framework from Google. From Google, And by the way, Kotlin is a language that JetBrains just put out uh, so that people could write uh, Android apps much more easily than writing with Java. Kotlin's gonna get the same beating as well if this Flutter framework turns out to be what it looks like it's gonna be. So I would not be investing in Swift, even though in of itself, the Swift language is a nice looking language. Now. There's one other application of Swift that I'm aware of. IBM has ported Swift to the server because Apple, they created Swift, I think it was 2.14. And 
And then they released it, they open sourced it, so any nerd could work on Swift. So uh, the IBM nerd said, hey, that's Swift, pretty good language. If you watch the previous video, I showed how fast Swift is when it runs. It's super fast. It, it blows the doors off of PHP, JavaScript, Java. It's almost as fast as C, C++. The problem is, is that even though you have that super high performance and IBM sees that, that application on the server, talking about the web server for building web apps, it's still a very early implementation. Uh, I was reading about it. And I don't think a lot of people are going to adopt it simply because web servers and servers are so powerful these days, you, they, could, they can handle huge loads. So unless you're like Facebook or uh, you know, Instagram or uh, YouTube or something, you, could, you, know, you can grab any server-side tech, whether it be a JavaScript node or PHP Laravel or Ruby Rails. Ruby Rails, too slow, just kidding. Ruby people get all anxious when I do that. All kidding aside, I just don't think that the performance is that much of an issue when it comes to server-side code. And I don't think people, most companies are going to be investing in dedicated Swift server-side apps simply because PHP... Uh, Python, uh, JavaScript, but it's going to be PHP and JavaScript, I think, generally speaking. They're more than good enough to handle 99% of new web apps that are going to be developed. So, to conclude, because of hybrid apps, which are web-based uh, frameworks like React Native and uh, PhoneGap, because those, are, those hybrid apps are, are a easily able to handle today the vast majority of mobile app development, that's going to make Swift not that important. It's going to make Java for Android not that important. And you add on top of that this new Flutter framework from Google, which allows you to write one code base, compiles down to almost native speeds for both platforms, iOS and Java. That's another nail in the coffin for Swift. And I think, unfortunately, Kotlin, even though it looks like it could be a great language, I think it's going to be DOA. So this is where, when you're looking at technology, you have to consider both the business end of it and the technology end of it. And I have seen this more than one occasion where I've seen very good technology. Because of market forces, it still disappeared. I remember back in, I'll give you one example, back in my Java days, there was this framework, a UI framework called Velocity. Very good framework. Loved it. Great, simple. It's nowhere. It wasn't uh, you know, because of market forces, because of competition, this and that, and the other thing. Even though I thought it was very the best at what it did, it, it disappeared. So that's what I think was going to happen with Swift. So I would not be investing in the Swift programming language. I think it is over. Now, it's going to take time. You know, These things die slowly, and Apple's going to keep trying to resuscitate it, of course. But uh, now it's going to become a niche language. That is my prediction. Just like I predicted Ruby would become a, a niche language, even at its height of its popularity, I saw this coming. So, uh, but I think that the, the uh, Swift dropping is going to be even faster than Ruby's drop into the oblivion. Anyway, I just did that to uh, trigger Ruby people. Again, I like Ruby, great language, but mm, not good enough. Ciao.